Good morning you 7,000 lovers of common sense and the 60% of you who haven't subscribed yet to another installment of the Watchtower Propaganda Machine. Today I have a fascinating episode for you, but in case you have been living under a rock, let me give you the Cliff Notes recap of this whole mess. Watchtower has recently focused their efforts on improving their PR department and to do this they send branch representatives to local media outlets to push stories about going back to in-person meetings or to promote an upcoming convention. Under the direction of Robert Hendricks, Watchtower has inundated the local media space with their bluff pieces. Here are two videos that I previously made on the subject if you want a bit more context. But what happens when a Watchtower representative is forced to go off script? What if they are asked tough questions by their radio host? Well, it all goes to hell. Today, we're gonna watch this short interview with radio host Bill Keeler from Utica, New York, and see a Jehovah's Witness representative give everything but a good witness. <laughs> Brace yourself, this is really bad. That uh, Now, we've had people in talking about Jehovah's Witness, but we have never had someone in representing, and I'm going way, 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 way back. Uh, we've never had anyone in representing Jehovah's Witness, and uh, you are just that this morning. Uh, correct. Yeah, I serve as a local spokesman in the central New York region. Okay. All right. So um, uh, I'll ask some questions. That, there may be some questions that I asked that you that you can't answer. I don't know. I, I don't know. But I'm I'm going to ask what I can here. First of all, um, let's talk about the the religion, uh, if you could explain what it is to be a Jehovah's Witness. Could you? Uh, sure, yeah. We, we uh, base our beliefs strictly on the Bible, um, trying to follow the example of the first century Christians, congregation, and as it was established. And we prefer a literal understanding of the scriptures and base our beliefs on that. Okay. And, but there are some changes happening. Um, with regard to our public outreach, yeah, absolutely. Uh, can yep. I just bring up the, the um, if I could, and I just want to be... You're good with me just being honest, and, and you won't be offended by it, and, and I won't be offended. Well, what, you can say whatever you want about me. <laughs> I'm good. Well, we're mostly here to talk about this new outreach. I know we are. Yes, I know we are, but, but the knocking on the door yep. has been an issue and is an issue for, for some people. Yeah, that's a huge understatement. I would dare to say that door-to-door -door witnessing is counterproductive at this point, by constantly going uninvited to people's houses, you just tarnish the reputation of your movement. Mm -hmm. And what you're about to talk about may be addressing that. Am I am I correct? I, I think that's a fair statement. Yeah. Because yeah. mm -hmm. you see, I, I, I don't want to be... And listen, I what I say, and I try to be respectful. It's like I have my religion, um, you have yours, um, and, and I'd like to leave it at that. Some people are willing to talk in the pamphlets. You know, I give those, the people who do knock on doors, the most amazing credit in the world. I couldn't, I couldn't do that. Yeah, a lot of non-witnesses will praise JWs in their ministry efforts, even if they disagree with their teachings. But I wouldn't take that as a huge compliment, though. People say that because they just want to be nice and compliment you on something. Have you done it before? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I spent it's, a lot of time doing it's it. It's a yeah. requirement. Uh, is it a requirement? Uh, sharing in the ministry and outreach is, yes. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Yep. So um, would you also be okay if, if there were people who had any questions, they could call in with a, with a question? Uh, we prefer not to. I just want to stick to the you want kind to of stick. Stick to okay. the script, if that's okay. All right, all right. To the script. Okay. A perfect chance to answer people's questions thrown out the window. We got to stick to the script. Get used to it, guys. What is changing about the knocking on the door? Uh, well, we're doing more community outreach now with carts in public locations. Okay. Right? So it's a community service. Uh, most people are most familiar, many of your listeners, maybe most of them, with our door-to-door -door ministry. But uh, our outreach is changing slightly. People that have traveled may have gone to airports, major cities with transportation hubs, subway systems. Well, they'll, they'll see our mobile literature carts that uh, offer free Bibles, Bible literature that help address some of the problems. Do those carts say Jehovah's Witness or does it say something else? It says jw.org, which JW. is our website. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent website okay. that uh, addresses a lot of questions people are facing. 
Uh, locally here in Utica, it's interesting because we focus on English, Spanish, and then Korean Sagal literature. You know, we have a significant okay, uh, right. population from Myanmar where that's their mm -hmm. native tongue. But of course, we have other languages available as well. If you're not familiar with the language he mentioned, Karen Sagal is spoken in Myanmar and Thailand and written in this circular Burmese script that looks like alien hieroglyphs. It's really cool. Uh, I just thought you might want to know. Okay. So the kiosk would be different where you're not coming into that person's space. You're where that person might be. That person may be uh, socializing, traveling, et cetera, et cetera. And then they would walk up to you or would you still reach out to them? No, good question. And uh, I think that's the difference is when we're in our door-to-door -door ministry, we're initiating the contact. Like it's our approach to them. Yes, However, yes. with our new cart activity, it's different. Because we don't approach people. I mean, we acknowledge people. We say hello. We wave. We have conversations, of course. We don't want to be rude to passers-by. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. However, uh, we generally don't initiate a conversation. Okay. We, we right. wait for people to approach us. And the nice thing is locally here in Utica, we've had over 220 people trained in this new ministry outreach locally. Okay. So will the knocking on the doors go away completely? It will not. And okay. uh, let me explain why. You know, the door to door ministry has been a hallmark of Jehovah's Witnesses mm -hmm. for the better part of the last century. I could feel the slight sigh of disappointment when Patrick said they're still going to go door to door. Right. Mm -hmm. It's what we're known for. Um, I see it in uh, it, tongue in cheek in TV shows all the time with a yeah. knock at the yeah, door. Yeah, right, yeah. So, good morning. Are you prepared for Jehovah's return? Because if you're not, I have a plan for you. That well fuck you i want to apologize i did a parody song years ago <laughs> um about the knocking on the door but you're not the only group that does that there are some other groups uh, latter-day saints do it as well yeah that, that's uh, true yeah. um but as a hallmark of our activity that that won't change uh, okay. in part that's because of what the scriptures say you know at acts chapter 20 and verse 20 it actually uses a phrase about a ministry outreach going house to house. Yeah, okay. Right, so first century Christians did it. Jesus talked about sharing good news. Acts 20.20 20 is a misreading of the text. The verse originally referred to Paul teaching Christians in their respective homes, not canvassing the neighborhood looking for converts. XJW Caleb did a great video on the subject. So no, the door-to-door -door ministry has no biblical precedent, like at all. It's simply a vestigial feature carried over from the days of Charles Chase Russell. And guess what? It doesn't work anymore. Uh, this month in particular, we're on a campaign globally among Jehovah's Witnesses, 8.7 million of us, sharing a special issue of the Watchtower that was printed in 2020. Of course, COVID hit. We couldn't do an in-person outreach mm -hmm. at that time, but it's about uh, what is God's kingdom, kind of a positive message. Okay. I believe uh, Jehovah's Witnesses uh, knock on doors. Um, Church of Latter-day Saints, um, Girl Republic Scouts. Republicans, Democrats, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts. <laughs> yeah. um, those are the people who knock on your door on a Saturday morning. Um, so that won't end. That still will continue. Um, what success rate do you feel that you have when you knock on, when you do a cold call? Basically, it's a cold call. Yeah. I think it's really about success in that we're sharing something positive, right? Okay. So, so if people respond or not, and that's their decision, we never force anything. Sure. Uh, and I right. hope no, no one's ever gotten that impression that we're sticking our foot in the door. But I think it's an opportunity to share something positive, and I think that's always successful. Okay. That was clearly not what the host was asking you. Patrick is very aware that cold calling is not effective at making converts, so he twists the issue, basically arguing that their main objective is sharing something positive, whatever the hell that means, or as we call it in JW land, giving a good witness. But the main purpose of the ministry is to make disciples. All Jehovah's Witnesses know this, and it says so in the publications as well. And sure, you don't force people to listen to your message or to donate, but showing up at their doorstep uninvited, especially on a Saturday morning, is already a huge disregard for their privacy and their time. And in this day and age, it just comes off as disrespectful. Is this cart outreach ministry being done elsewhere, and what kind of success have you had with that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, like I mentioned, 8.7 million Jehovah's Witnesses in 240 lands globally. Uh, the reality is this is a part of our ministry in all parts of the world, even small communities. 
Uh, one of the things that's really nice is that we offer literature on our website, jw.org, in over a thousand languages. Oh, and, wow. And most places, it's tailored to the local needs, like what languages are spoken locally in a community. And then, of course, uh, we also see that a lot of people are apparently interested because currently there's more than five million people studying the Bible with Jehovah's Witnesses worldwide. For a religion that boasts about growth and numbers, five million Bible studies is nothing to brag about. How many of these studies are actually children being taught by their parents? Or people who study the Bible with the witnesses but never get baptized? But you know what the worst part is? It's that back in 2019, JWs were conducting more than 9 million studies. What happened? Even with COVID, how is it possible that you lost 4 million studies in only 4 years? I mean, it seems Jehovah's Chariot is on reverse. Uh, can I ask you personally how you came to be a witness? Did you Were you raised in the faith, or did somebody knock on your door and bring you into the Is it right to call church? you a witness? Is that what yeah. You, okay. Oh, yeah. That yeah. doesn't offend me. It's okay. actually, I kind of view it complimentary, actually. All right. Okay. <laughs> so how did you get in, uh, involved? Yeah, I, w I would say I was raised around the faith of Jehovah's Witnesses, not strict ad adherent. And uh, I got into my teen years, and I became serious about examining what the Bible said uh, against the beliefs of Jehovah's Witnesses, and I was fully convinced of the truthfulness of it and made, made a dedication based on that. Right. Okay. So yes, it seems Patrick was brought up in this religion, or at least he had family members who brought him in. But of course, he doesn't want to say that directly because it would make it look like he was indoctrinated into the religion. Oops. Uh, why is this a change, I'm going to ask, uh, you have a multicolored tie, a multicolored shirt, and I don't think you're wearing black pants. Um, traditionally, white shirt, black tie, black pants. Why are you different? I think you might be thinking about the Latter Day Saints. Is that? Yeah, yeah I think the Mormons do that. Yeah, the yeah. Mormons so I've do confused that. it. It's all okay. Right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> JWs have been so successful at preaching their clear Bible message that they still get confused with Mormons all of the time even though they are two vastly different religions. Right. Yeah, I've seen people, uh, you know, women, men, you know, mm -hmm. come to the door. and. Why do women have to wear, again, these are three, I'm going to throw some at you. Why do they have to wear a skirt? Uh, well, well, well yeah. I had a, I had a, we had neighbors who were Jehovah's Witness, mm -hmm. and the, the daughter every day had to wear a skirt when she went to school. Yeah, well, you know, people's personal decisions are personal decisions. So it's not a, it's not a rule. Uh, not with regard to our secular activities, no. Okay, all right. Um, there have been some people who say if they try to leave the church, they lose family members. How do you respond to that? Well, I really, I'm not in a position to comment on that being local. That's more of an organizational level. I can, if you'd like, I'd be happy to email you policies on that from the organization or provide some information. So there is a policy that, uh, that, that addresses that? There is a policy. In fact, if you look on our website, there's even some information on that, jw.org. There's a nice search bar, but I'll arrange to make sure you get that information. And you know that there is a group right now currently that is uh, local that is that is trying to get the message out that it is there are dangers to being a, a part of the Jehovah's Witness religion for that very reason. You know there's a group out there currently. Actually, I did not personally. I, I've, I've been unaware of that. But again, I, I can't speak to policy organizationally, right? Fair just, enough. just locally. I mean, just imagine for a moment the Apostle Paul being invited to a talk show, being asked the question about his beliefs, and giving you this answer. Oh, I'm not in a position to comment on that. Instead, go search it up on this website where you're going to get a sanitized version of our destructive policies. What a lack of cojones. Patrick was not expecting shunning to be brought up, and much less the mention of XJWs in the community. I mean, the host did his research beforehand, and I just praise him for that. And I, hope I you understand and I, that. And, I, and, I, and I'm going to tell you, I'm, I understand that, and I'm not going to put you in a position where I brought you in to ambush you by any means. But I have to ask those. I'd be... I would it would I would not be doing my job if I didn't ask those questions. No, no, I I, I kind of knew that. Thank the, you I knew the <laughs> answer you were going to give, but I still have to ask the question. Yep. What do you want people to know today when you walk out of these the studio? What do you want people to know and perceive about your appearance and about not your physical appearance, but the appearance on the program and uh, and the Jehovah's Witness faith? 
Yeah. Uh, I think we want people to acknowledge that we're just sharing something positive, right? When we go in our ministry outreach door to door or in our cart activity, it's not a membership drive. We're not looking to sign people up. Yes, I can definitely smell shite. Another blatant lie. In your official website, under the question, why do JWs go door to door? We read, Jesus told his followers to make disciples of people of all nations. We follow the example of those early Christians and find that the door to door ministry is a good way to reach people. With what purpose? To make disciples, just like Jesus did. Let's not BS each other. You reach people with the express purpose of making converts. And let me give you another. True religion in no way practices secretiveness. Worshippers of the true God have been instructed not to hide their identity or to obscure their purposes as Jehovah's Witnesses. What happened? What happened? Did your, your balls drop off? Hmm? Your purpose as Jehovah's Witnesses is to witness about Jehovah. Why? In order to make disciples. I know it, you know it, the whole world knows it, yet you deny it in front of thousands of people. Hell, this was the perfect opportunity for you to declare Jehovah's urgent message that Armageddon will destroy the system any second now, including Bill Kuehler. But no. Instead, you just say, we just want to share a positive message. Get out of here, dude. If I was Jehovah, I would be ashamed to call you my witness. We're not looking for donations. We're looking to share something positive to help people cope with the problems that we're all facing, right? Mm -hmm. People's lives are changing today. People are potentially busier than they've ever been before in all of history with so many distractions. And that's why our, our CART ministry outreach is so successful, because it makes it available in places where people wouldn't yeah, be home, yeah. right? Things like that. Um, and 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 are you finding there are a lot of people that are that are looking for they're looking for an answer of some sort? They're struggling. They're looking for. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people I mean, who's not dealing with a challenge or a trial today, right? Yeah. Difficulty, family, extended family, friends or community group. We're all facing challenges. And one of the things I'd state as a, a fact is Jehovah's Witnesses are convinced unequivocally convinced that the Bible can help provide positive, satisfying answers to those issues. Okay. For a man with such a serious lack of balls, it's awfully arrogant for him to speak in behalf of 8.5 million people. Spoiler alert, Patrick, not all Jehovah's Witnesses are equally convinced of their beliefs. Hell, there's probably thousands of JWs out there who don't even believe in the Bible anymore. And then I would ask you, um, what is the... I'm assuming there are rules the church has, or guidelines or rules, correct me if they're, if they're not rules, on when you, you become a part of the ministry, when you become a part of going out and going door to door. What are the, what are the guidelines with, with that? Is it five years old? Do you have to reach a communion? Uh, do you do communion? Um, I, I guess I have a lot of questions. Yeah, there. Apparent, apparently, yeah, though. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, what we do is uh, we structure an understanding of the scriptures first, and then, of course, someone can represent Jehovah's Witnesses in the ministry. Uh, they have to qualify, but again, those are more like high, higher oh, so level. So you, you just don't go. You just don't. It's like, okay, you've reached the age of seven. Now you're going out with your parents. Uh, you have to be trained to go out or qualify. Correct. Okay. And what is that process like? I don't know if we got enough time this morning. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, let's put it in a nutshell. Yeah. I mean, you go through classes, you go through, I mean... Uh, yeah, well, Jehovah's Witnesses attend meetings regularly. Part of those meetings are training for the ministry and okay. things of that nature. So essentially, a person comes to that understanding and then eventually could qualify to represent the congregation. Uh, I know that um, I'm a Methodist. My wife is Catholic. Um, we fight all the time. <laughs> I think that's probably the reason. Um, we yeah, really yeah that's the reason. Buddy. That is, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, if... Um, so when you when you become a Jehovah's Witness, you would not marry someone who's not a Jehovah's Witness. 
Well, again, policy matters. Uh, that's a policy. Yeah. So okay. I, I, I just prefer not to comment on something that's kind of above my pay grade figuratively. Okay. I mean, Bill Keeler and his friend have been really patient with this clown so far. Dude, just answer the question. Patrick, tell your host how Jehovah's Witnesses are only allowed to marry inside the Lord. I mean, in the Lord, inside the religion, under the threat of free proof. Yeah. All right. Okay. As a volunteer. Fair enough. Uh, anything is else? your wife? A, is your are you, are married? you married? Is your wife yeah. mm -hmm. yep. part of the faith? She is. Yep. Okay. Yeah, we share that in common. That's probably why we don't argue. Okay. <laughs> All right. What an asshole! Yeah, my marriage works because we serve the same cult leaders. Um, I, I, this might be a policy, but does the male have dominance over the female in the Jehovah's Witness uh, faith? Dominance? Absolutely not. No, we would never. Who wears the pants? Is what I'm saying to you. <laughs> Again, it, I'll, I'll direct you, you can a, look it up in jw.org. Look under headship and you'll find it. And you'll find okay. a scriptural answer, right? That's the thing, though. Okay, all right. We're not going to make up policies that don't have a basis in the well, scripture. Well, you know what that is, though. What is it? Is it is it male? Is it female? Is it... Because um, well, in my house, it's female. I will tell you this. Um, <laughs> I don't make decisions. In my family, I don't make decisions without consulting my wife. Okay, all right. Fair That's, enough. That leads to a happy marriage. Who makes the, who makes the ultimate decision, though? Well, we like to think uh, our understanding of the scriptures guides it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. It's the biggest piece of dog shit. More BS. The husband makes the final decision. It's written in your own publications. And as long as his decision is not in conflict with the Bible, the wife is expected to fully submit. So, yes, in Jehovah's Witness family life, the man is dominant over the woman. You can sugarcoat it all you want by being nice to your wife or by listening to her opinion, by being respectful. But at the end of the day, this is a patriarchal system. Cut and dry. We don't force people to right, come to their right. door, no. Have ring doorbells changed things for you guys? They have. Yeah. They have, yeah. I, I'm a lot quieter in my conversation with my partner at a ring doorbell out of respect for the homeowner. Correct. Yeah, right. right. We, we want to be courteous to them. Because they can play it back. They'll listen <laughs> yeah. to it back. <laughs> yeah. Everything well, is changed. You can probably have conversations with homeowners uh, or, or renters without even I having face-to-face yeah. -face conversations. I actually them. have. Yeah, more than once that's been the case. I would dread being a JW in the age of ring doorbells. YouTube is absolutely brimming with these clips of JWs and Mormons being awkward at the door. Long gone are the days of doorside Kingdom Hall gossip. Oh, okay. Didn't see it, but it says Jehovah's Witnesses. We have good news. Go away. I do have some listener questions, um, and I'm judging them as to, because uh, I understand. What you don't want to do is come on here and get pelted by people. Um, I understand that, and fair enough. Uh, but I have Wayne asking, has there ever been a Jehovah's Witness president in the United States? <laughs> uh, not to my knowledge. Yeah, not to mine either. Um, and Wayne said, don't forget politicians knock too. Um, yeah, I, you did mention that. We included that. them, Boy mm -hmm. Scouts, Girl Scouts. Um, and uh, all right. Okay, very interesting. Um, how did you guys handle, uh, I say you guys, I hope that's not disrespectful. Uh, how, how did you handle the pandemic, the mask mandate, all of that? Was there a Jehovah's Witness uprising to say this is wrong? Or did you accept the fact that there was a virus out there? Um, or am I going out of the boundaries here? No, I can, I can tell you. In fact, we published a, a good deal of information throughout COVID. Uh, all of our in-person ministry and meetings went to a virtual platform. You did? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. for the safety of people involved. And it was uh, very hard for every and People of faith especially, it was yeah. very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you're used to the camaraderie, the comfort, the support of a congregation, and you don't have yeah. it in person, we, we agree. But we were thrilled in uh, early uh, 22 when we started meeting in person again. Yeah, okay. Uh, and it was a really nice opportunity. Later, at the September 1st of 22, we started our in-person door-to-door ministry again, which had been absent for two and a half years. Yeah. Uh, I was wondering if you could talk to the Amish and see if they would come out uh, publicly, um, <laughs> because it's always been the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Amish. There was a mystery. Yeah, I think this is a brilliant idea to come out and have someone that, uh, that people can talk to and ask questions of. I think it's quite brilliant. Patrick didn't even answer like half of the questions thrown at him. 
If he's just gonna direct you to a website, then what do we need a spokesperson for? Just hire a golden retriever with the website logo on his collar. He would do exactly the same job. And at least he wouldn't outright lie to your face. I think it's smart. Um, again, please talk to the, to, to the, to the Amish. Yeah, see what you can do for us there, <laughs> We'd like to know. All right, anything else you want people to know? No, thank you for the time. We appreciate it. Uh, you know, we certainly, so, we certainly value being able to express yeah, in, in, in yeah. a form. You know, like we said, we're not here to, to, to preach a message. We're here to inform in this context. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I do preach, but that's a different format, a different form, and we appreciate the opportunity to How often do you this. go to church? How often are you supposed to go to church each week? Uh, supposed to, or well, supposed I can tell you. To. I can tell you when our meetings are. Ours okay. are Tuesdays and Sundays, so we okay. I attend both times each week. So yeah. twice a week, mm -hmm. and there may be other things that mm -hmm. are going on, yep. like every other church. All okay. right. And is there uh, last question? Is there someone I could speak to at some point uh, about the accusations that have been made? Is there someone higher up than uh, than your pay grade that would publicly talk about those things? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not sure that they comment publicly but i think that we could provide you with some the information yeah, okay they could email will you or help open with, you. with open that line of communication for me i'll do my best okay all right okay uh anything else i think we're good patrick thank you you have any questions for us i don't think so okay. i appreciate, appreciate <laughs> your right. time thank you all right, well, thank, you. thank you very much oh man such a fascinating interview so much to break down uh, first of all, the host was incredibly respectful and patient because it must be really frustrating inviting someone over to your talk show and they won't even answer some of your most basic questions. Obviously, Patrick DeBono was not expecting to be forced off script. He was just there to sell his uh, little cart witnessing advertisement and move on. But damn, I'm glad the host tossed those questions at him. I would say overall, this was such a terrible witness. If I was a normal person hearing this podcast in the radio and heard the answers Patrick gave, it would make me stay the hell away from this religion. So thank you Patrick De Bono, I guess, for making your religion even less accessible to the masses. You truly are doing Jehovah's work. I mean, looking at this guy, it's just a confirmation that most Jehovah's Witnesses are somewhat aware of how unappealing their doomsday message really is. That's why they gotta paint it as something else like a community service or sharing a positive message instead of what it really is, an effort to convert people in order to save them from the imminent destruction of Armageddon. When you come face to face with any Jehovah's Witness, ask them directly, are you trying to convert me? And you'll find out that most witnesses will skirt around the question and come up with some bullshit like Patrick just did. Patrick also knows that watchtower shunning policies are a PR nightmare. That's why he just avoided the subject altogether. Their website has become a cop-out, a way to avoid answering the tough questions that they're not ready to face. Long gone are the days of the courageous Jehovah's Witness, the ones who would tell you in your face that you would be toast in Armageddon unless you repent. It's 2023 now, and all we have left is a bunch of spineless policy men who are ashamed of expressing their own beliefs. Is this the Jehovah's Witness? No, this is Patrick. Oh well, guys, let me know what you thought of this interview in the comments below. If you appreciate my work and would like to support my activism, you know where to find me. Check me out on Patreon, join the YouTube channel, and for only $1 a month, you gain early access to all my videos and you help me keep making more videos for you in the years to come. So, I'll see you in the next video, guys. Have a wonderful day and stay away from the tower. Goodbye, little sheep.